The Sumter Valley Gold Dredge is a well-preserved piece of mining equipment that wound its way through Sumter Valley, digging up the earth as it went. That is the town of Sumter, which is now a very small 200-person tourism-based town. Sumter had a rise and decline that came along with the Gold Rush and the Sumter Valley Railroad. The Sumter Valley Railroad was originally built to haul timber to Baker City. This steam-powered railway still runs today after being restored for visitors. Sumter is now best known for its giant and intact gold mining dredge. A dredge at first looks like a big boat sitting on dry ground. After processing, a dredge is able to travel like a boat through the pond it created for itself. Before we begin, you might be wondering what exactly a dredge is. This dredge has a conveyor belt of buckets on the left, scooping up raw material. It then gets dropped into a filter which keeps gold-bearing rocks and pushes out the unwanted tailings through the stacker on the right. Three dredges worked Sumter Valley from 1913 to 1954. The first two Sumter dredges were constructed in 1912 and 1915 by the Powder River Gold Dredging Company. After President Franklin Roosevelt nearly doubled the price of gold in 1934, the third dredge was built bigger and more efficient than previous dredges. Sumter No. 3 was built with parts from the first dredge. The dredge was very loud and you could hear it from miles away. These dredges did not require a lot of water to operate as they moved their pond of water with them as they dug. The dredge could harvest 20 buckets per minute, each pulling one ton of raw material. During operation, the dredge only required three people at a time to run it. Running year-round, the 4th of July and Christmas were the only days that the dredge did not run. As you explore the dredge, you will notice that swallows have it surrounded and even nest in the upper area. It is good to see that birds have adapted to the area after so much human use. The inside of the dredge is in great condition showing all the parts needed to operate. Here you can get up close to everything involved in the dredge operations, including moving the bucket line and processing the rock. These wheels were the system used to move the dredge once an area had been mined. Other gears and wheels were used for the digging unit. A few motors were used to run all of the equipment. 
These were powered by hydroelectricity from the nearby Fremont Powerhouse. Another source of power was directly present on the dredge, and that was steam power. Big rocks and dirt were filtered out through the machinery here. Heavier rock, including gold, would settle on the riffles. Everything from the riffles would be put into a barrel, and mercury, which bonds with the gold, would be used to collect it. Sticking out like a tank barrel, the stacker has a conveyor belt that moves discarded rock out to the tailing piles. The dredging company leased land from ranchers to extract gold from. Unfortunately, the land was unusable after it was returned to the ranchers. The dredging spanned about eight miles of land up the Powder River. Some land has healed over time, but most of the damage is unrecoverable. Like all human activity, dredging does unnaturally affect the land. Everything from topsoil is moved down to bedrock, and different minerals from below are introduced to the water. After harvesting one ton of gold in its lifetime, the last dredge closed in 1954 with around $100,000 in debt. In its lifetime, this dredge made about 4.5 million. Fortunately, there was interest in preserving the history of this site. Today, the Oregon Parks and Recreation Department has preserved this area as the Sumter Valley Gold Dredge State Heritage Area. Significant work has been done to restore and keep the dredge structure. The Sumter Gold Dredge is one of the best preserved gold dredges there is, and is a must-visit destination for anyone interested in mining history.